Crossroads of Twilight begins with Rado Ituralda. He is a general from Arad Domain who was tasked by his king to get rid of the Dragonsworn in the country. After fighting the Dragonsworn for some time, he changes his plans because he sees the arrival of the Sunchan as a bigger threat and he decides to make peace with the Dragonsworn. He goes to meet with them and tells them that they need to unite against the Sunchan and that he has the perfect plan to defeat them. After some arguing, the Dragonsworn decide to follow Roto Ituralda and fight together against the Sunchan. Matt Cawthon and his group are escaping Ebudar with the help of Balan Luka and his menagerie. After Matt learns that Tuon is the daughter of the Nine Moons and therefore destined to be his wife, he tries to get to know her and the two begin to build a relationship. Matt promises to return her to the Sunchan when his group is safe and Tuon promises not to try to escape as long as he keeps his word. Ton Marilyn then informs Matt that Queen Tylen was found dead in her bed and that it's very likely that the Golem killed her. Matt feels terrible about this because he knows that the Golem killed her because of him. The Aes Sedai that Matt rescued from Ebudar inform him that there's a huge amount of the One Power being used in the direction that they're going and they think that it's the Forsaken but Matt starts seeing an image of Rand and Nynaeve sitting across each other channeling and he knows that they're the ones doing it. Perrin Ivara and his group are still following the Shadow Aeol that took Fael, Aleandre and Morghais. Berlin gives Perrin a letter that one of her men stole from Asima. The letter is from High Lady Surath and it gives Masima protection from the Sunchan. This confirms that Masima has in fact been in contact with the Sunchan. The next day, Elias Machera returns from scouting and he informs Perrin that the Shido have captured a town and they are staying in it. A Nashaman makes a gateway close to the town and after they scout the town, they realize that they cannot defeat the Shido in combat because they have around 10,000 Ayo warriors and a lot of wise ones that can channel and Perrin only has a small army. Suddenly, Perrin begins to see an image of Rand and Nynaeve sitting across each other channeling and the Aes Sedai and Ashaman with him begin to feel a large amount of the One Power being used at that moment. They think that it's the Forsaken or the Dark One himself doing it but Perrin assures them that it is Rand. When they return to the camp, Perrin wonders how he's going to rescue Fael and he decides to send some of his Aeo to capture some of the Shido so that they can interrogate them and learn more details about the Shido camp. Supplies are running low so Perrin and his group go to a town called Soul Harbor to buy food and supplies. When they arrive at the town, they notice that the townspeople are acting strange and as they're doing business with them, Perrin's men report seeing ghosts around the town. Perrin doesn't believe it at first but then an Aes Sedai also reports the same thing. Perrin and the Aes Sedai question the townspeople and they say that the dead have been walking around the town for some time but they have no explanation for it. The Aes Sedai wants to stay behind and help the townspeople but Perrin refuses because he needs them to rescue Fael. When they arrive back at the camp, Perrin is informed that the Aeo managed to capture five Shido Aeo and Perrin begins to question them but they refuse to talk. Perrin thinks about Fael and decides to do whatever it takes to get her back. So he takes his axe and he chops off one of the prisoner's hands and he tells the rest of the prisoners that they'll be asked different questions and if they give different answers, their limbs will be cut off one by one and he will leave them in a city to beg for the rest of their lives. He then goes to the forest to think and Elias Machera joins him and the two speak about what happened. After a while, Aram arrives and tells him that the Shido have talked and they all gave the same answers but they haven't seen Fael. Before he returns to the camp, Perrin decides to throw his axe away and he leaves it behind. Back at the camp, he is told that Talenbor has returned after disappearing for some time. He has been searching for more gaze and now he has returned with a proposition. 
he tells Perrin that he found 15,000 Sonchan and he suggests becoming allies with them. Perrin, who is now desperate, decides to listen to what Talimbor has to say. We then go over to Elaine Trakand. The city of Camelin is under siege by four small armies, but with the ability to make gateways, Elaine is still bringing in supplies and she's traveling around Andor gathering support to secure the throne of Andor. When Elaine and Avienda notice the huge amount of the One Power being used, they get very worried because they know that it somehow involves Rand. They consider going to help him, but they ultimately decide against it because they don't want to get in his way. When they return to Camelin, the Sea Folk tell her that they have to leave because their leader was killed by the Sanchan in Evudar, and now they have to have a meeting to choose a new leader. Elaine is very disappointed by this news because some of them are channelers and she needs them to defend Camelin, so she asks them what it will take for them to stay. The Sea Folk ask for one square mile of land close to the river as their own property in Camelin and in exchange, they will let nine of the Seafolk channelers stay in Camelin, but only until Elaine manages to secure the throne of Andor. Elaine agrees to this deal, and after some time, she also manages to gain the support of some small houses around Andor. She's then told by the Wise Ones that she is expecting twins, and that she will have trouble channeling because of the pregnancy. Iwen Alvir, the rebel Aes Sedai, and Gareth Brynn are in Tarbalin laying siege to the White Tower. Gareth Brynn tells Iwen that they can easily take the White Tower by teleporting his men inside the White Tower using gateways, but Iwen refuses because she doesn't want to fight the White Tower Aes Sedai. Iwen and the rebel Aes Sedai want to peacefully unite the White Tower but they also want Elida to step down as the Amorlin seat and to send her into exile. Iwen sends some rebel Aes Sedai to begin negotiations with the White Tower and she also sends Aes Sedai to investigate the huge amount of the One Power that they felt some time ago. In case the negotiations with the White Tower don't go well, Iwen has come up with a backup plan that somehow involves Quendiar. Quendiar is an unbreakable material that is made using the One Power, and since the breaking of the world, no one knew how to make it, but Iwain has recently rediscovered the weave to make it. After a while, the Aes Sedai that Iwain sent to investigate the huge amount of the One Power that they felt some time ago return, and they inform everyone that they cannot tell what kind of weave or weapon was used exactly but that it somehow involved both Saidin and Saidar, and that it was used in Shadarlogoth, but now the city is completely destroyed and there's only a huge pit where Shadarlogoth once stood. The Aes Sedai think that the ones responsible for this are the Forsaken, and after they realize that they do not stand a chance against that amount of channeling, they come to the conclusion that they need the support of the Ashaman so they propose making an alliance with the Black Tower. Some Aes Sedai are outraged by this proposition, but after a very heated argument, they agree to send an embassy to the Black Tower. During the night, Iwain has a dream where she sees a Sunshan woman helping her, but in the same dream, she sees the Sunshan attacking the White Tower. In the White Tower, Elida has a meeting with the Hall of the Tower and she learns that the majority of the Aes Sedai want to open negotiations with the rebel Aes Sedai, so Elida decides to allow them to negotiate with them, but she has a couple of demands. Her demands are to disband the Blue Aja and to make every Aes Sedai that follows Iwain serve penance under her guidance. After the meeting, Alviaren confronts Elida. Alviaren is angry with Elida because she has been making decisions without her permission. But Elida is no longer scared of Alviaren because she has decided to blame other Aes Sedai for all of her recent mistakes and thus Alviaren can no longer blackmail her. 
Elida tells Aldearen that when she gets enough evidence of her crimes, she will prosecute her and then she removes her as the keeper of the Chronicles. Aldearen believes that Elida knows that she is Black Aja, so she goes to her room and uses a Terangrial to summon Messana. When the Forsaken appears, Alviaren tells her that Elida knows that she is Black Aja, but Messana doesn't believe her and she decides to punish Alviaren for wasting her time. Out of nowhere, a large merge rule appears and he stops Messana from punishing Alviaren. The merge rule's name is Shaidar Haran and he says that he is the Hand of the Shadow. He then binds and gags Messana and tells her that he's going to punish her for disobeying him. Alviaren is terrified of the creature because she thinks that he is the Dark One himself. Shaitar Haran marks Alviaren as his and orders her to find those who have threatened his creatures in the White Tower and deliver them to him. Alviaren accepts her new orders and leaves the room terrified. We then see Pevara and Tarna, two Aes Sedai of the Red Aja as they discuss the Black Tower. They are worried that the Black Tower has become too big and powerful for the White Tower to stop. So they believe that the Red Aja's new purpose should be to bond the Ashaman as their warders in order to control them, but they're not sure if it's smart to present this idea to the rest of the White Tower. Back in the rebel camp, Iwain lets some Aes Sedai know about her plan of letting Aes Sedai free themselves from the Three Oaths and then retire into the kin, but the Aes Sedai don't respond well to this idea and they're horrified by it. Later, she is informed that negotiations with the White Tower are not going well, so she decides to go ahead with her backup plan. Swan Sanche knows what the backup plan is and Iwain orders her to keep it a secret. Iwain gets on a boat and she goes to the White Tower's harbor and she tries to make the chains blocking the harbor into Quendiar. But before she accomplishes this, she is betrayed by someone and her boat is tipped over. Iwain falls into the water and when she comes out, she is captured by the White Tower Aes Sedai. Finally, we end with Rand. After the cleansing of Sidin, Rand and his group go to Tyr to rest. Rand and the Ashaman can feel that Sidin is now clean, but Katswain and the Aes Sedai are still not convinced. Debron Bashir, Loghain, and Loyal arrive to see Rand. Loyal has been visiting every Ogier steading because Rand told him to warn the Ogier about the Shadowspawn using the ways to travel and along the way he came upon Bashir and Loghain. When Rand learns that Loghain and other Ashaman have been bonding Aes Sedai, he gets very angry. He tells Loghain that this might start a war with the White Tower and Loghain tells him that it was Masrim Taim who gave the order. Rand then orders Bashir, Loghain, and Loyal to go speak to the Sun-Chan and make a deal. He says that he needs to do this because he can't fight the Shadow and the Sun-Chan at the same time. After some time, they return from their mission and they tell Rand that the Sun-Chan have agreed to a deal, but only after he meets with the Daughter of the Nine Moons.